Evening's Talking Points memo. It is beyond a reasonable doubt that the president and his administration misled Americans about Obamacare. Talking Points is tired of hearing the president's past statements that we will be allowed to keep our health insurance plans, period. That's not true. And the president should admit it right now. But he won't. Instead, yesterday, he launched into a torturous explanation about health insurance plans in place before the Affordable Care Act became law. So we wrote into the Affordable Care Act. You're grandfathered in on that plan. But if the insurance company changes it, then what we're saying is they've got to change it to a higher standard. They've got to make it better. They've got to improve the quality of the plan that they're selling. And that's part of the promise that we made, too. That's why we went out of our way to make sure that the law allowed for grandfathering. Talking Point submits there is not a grandfather in the entire country who knows what the president is talking about. The truth is, insurance companies change their policies all the time, and if those policies do not comply with Obamacare, you can't have them. Period, as the president is so fond of saying. And here's the proof. In 2010, Mr. Obama said this. Actually, any insurance that you currently have would be grandfathered in so you could keep. Um, and so you could decide not to get in the exchange the better plan. I, I could keep my ac ACME insurance, uh, just a high deductible, catastrophic plan. Uh, I would not be required to get the better one. Not true. Again, if your insurance company does not comply with the Obamacare mandate, you can't keep it. Few, if any, insurance plans stay static. There are always changes. So this is yet another sleight of hand. President Obama is making a huge mistake by continuing to pettifog the issue. The American people are not going to micromanage Obamacare, and the perception now is the president did not tell the truth. When Americans, even those who favor the Democratic Party, believe they are not being dealt with squarely, they react. Recent history proves this. You may remember that President Bush the Elder, running against Michael Dukakis, said this at the 1988 Republican Convention. I'm the one who will not raise taxes. My opponent now says, my opponent now says he'll raise them as a last resort or a third resort. But when a politician talks like that, you know that's one resort he'll be checking into. And I... taxes, but I will, and the Congress will push me to raise taxes, and I'll say no, and they'll push, and I'll say no, and they'll push again, and I'll say to them, read my lips. No new taxes. Well, that turned out to be false. Mr. Bush raised taxes in 1990 to the tune of $140 billion. He explained to the nation he had to do it because of the huge budget deficit. By the way, that deficit is minuscule compared to what we have now. Anyway, in 1992, President Bush lost the election to Bill Clinton. In fact, Mr. Bush was hammered, losing the popular vote by almost six million. The read my lips remark certainly hurt him. So President Obama should take note that unlike Fast and Furious, Benghazi, the IRS, and the NSA snooping, Obamacare is a far different deal. But Americans are directly affected, directly affected. That is, they're paying more money for something whether it be taxes or health care, they pay attention. Now let's deal with the L word controversy. Talking Points does not believe President Bush the Elder lied when he said he would not raise taxes. He sincerely did not think that would happen. So he did not actively deceive the public. However, he did fold and violated his promise and paid the price for that decision. Most Americans are smart enough to decide for themselves whether President Obama lied about Obamacare. My personal belief is that the president never read the law, did not understand the law, and did not care very much about the details of the law. Therefore, he said what his speechwriters wrote, that we could keep our health insurance and doctors if we want. That turns out to be false, and certainly the president is responsible for the deception. Now, part of my analysis is speculative. Maybe Mr. Obama did read the entire 974-page law. But I don't think he did, because that's not the way he rolls, to use a current expression. But in the end, it really doesn't matter, does it? Americans were misled. Obamacare at this point is chaotic, and most of us will have to pay more to protect ourselves and our families. That's not going away. Finally, the president's hardened supporters continue to defend him, and some of the rationalizations are actually amusing. On television, the more the apologists rant, the lower their ratings go. 
Nobody is buying this. Talking Points fully expects to hear that the malfunctioning computers are racist or something. That's how insane this whole thing has become. Right now, there are a number of pieces of legislation in the Senate and in the House that would delay Obamacare. That's the best solution. President Obama should give the country a break, fix what's broken, and level with the folks. If Obamacare really is best for most Americans, most Americans will come to that understanding. But right now it isn't, and the whole thing has descended into a farce. And that's enough.